don't know if that's exactly how I announced that I was coming back, but <laughs> pretty much what I did. Um, so I, I want to talk um, about something that, that I'm personally passionate about um, that I hope is helpful for some folks here, um, which is really about how do you build a business with soul? And I noticed that we haven't uh, talked a lot about culture, and I think it's a pretty popular topic these days. Um, but I've got, you know, what I think is a slightly different view on a lot of the culture talks that I've seen recently. Uh, let me pull this one up. So let me start with, um, I thought I'm back in Canada now, I should put a Bieber slide on to start. Um, I want to ask a question just to the audience uh, in terms of this definition of soul. So when you see these two photos up here, can you put them back up? You got Ray Charles and, and Justin Bieber. Who, who do you feel has more soul? So it's going to be a tough one. I'm actually very curious to see if it's Aranda. So um, who thinks is Ray Charles? Just show of hands. OK, you can put your hands down. Who thinks it's Justin Bieber? OK. <laughs> All right. A little bit of beaver favor going on here. Um, so the reason I put that up is, is I think it's really important to understand, like, although, you know, there are a couple of outliers, as I think there always will be um, when you talk about Bieber, um, generally everybody was in one camp in terms of thinking that Ray Charles had more soul. I'm just going to shout this out and please shout it out back to me, but why? Like, why, why did you put your hands up for Ray Charles? He is soul. <laughs> He sings soul music, come on. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, it comes, from the heart. comes from the heart? Brand association, interesting. He's real. Cool. So when I, you know, I, I ran this by some friends of mine earlier today and I had asked them the same question and I found they had a similar challenge with expressing why they thought somebody had more soul than somebody else because a lot of them would talk about it's a feeling that I have, you know, like you just feel that somebody has more soul than somebody else. Um, but they used words like more authentic and deeper, or like they had more depth than the other person that was being referenced. And I think that that was interesting because I've been thinking a lot recently, you know, as, as Alex mentioned, um, I just came back, I've been back I think for six or seven weeks now, um, and I'm back in the winter, which proves that I really mean it. Um, <laughs> But one of the things I've been thinking about a lot, and this is just, you know, people ask me often, like, you're, you're a startup guy now, you're, you're kind of back in the scene, like, where are you spending most of your time? And I think everybody assumes I'm spending most of my time building products, or I'm spending most of my time setting up the operations of the business or fundraising. And although those are all things that I'm doing, I would say that the majority of my time now I'm spending on really defining what our business is going to be about. And I've got this concept around um, business soul, like how do you build a business with soul? And I put up a definition, this is just really me ranting about kind of how I think about the concept of soul. But what business soul is to me is it's really about these things, especially articulated around like what you do when no one is looking and also what you do when everyone is looking. And I think the best companies in the world are the companies that you can look at and you really feel have depth to them or have soul. And some of the companies that you probably don't want to be working at, and maybe some of you are working at these companies today, are the ones where, you know, one day you just wake up and you say, why am I here? Like, what am I doing here? Uh, I don't feel connected to the business I'm, I'm working for. I don't feel connected to what we're trying to get accomplished. And I think that's a real shame. And so one of the things that I want to talk about today is assuming that you are building businesses or maybe some of you are actually looking for the next business to join. Um, I think there are some building blocks that I've been thinking about that I wanted to share in terms of how I think about building soul. And I think it's important to say just the same way that you can't declare yourself cool and it be true, um, I don't think you can declare that your business has soul and it just becomes that way. I, I think you need to earn it over a period of time and there's some fundamental building blocks in earning that. So one of the things, if you can pull it back up, there's four blocks that I put up top there in terms of a clear statement of what your business is doing. And I've got mission, vision, values, and beliefs. Now don't get too caught up in the wording because I think a lot of people spend time on dissecting and representing these words in different ways. Let me tell you how I define them. Um, mission is why the business exists. It's your ambition. It is what gets you up in the morning to be able to work there. The vision 
broadly defined is how you're going to get to that mission in a unique way. So this is the long-term plan. This is a way to be able to uniquely attack the mission. And the values and beliefs is how you are gonna operate when you get there. So this is how you expect everybody to operate in the business on your journey to accomplish your mission. And if you're able to clearly state these things, I think that you can have really meaningful conversations with other people about joining the business. And what ends up happening, as you can see below, is this idea of culture. The way that I think about culture is it's how that gets embodied in the day-to-day -day of work. And so what you ultimately want is you want to be very clear and declarative about this is the mission, this is our vision, how we uniquely think that we can go get there. These are the values and the beliefs that we want people to operate under within the business. And that, that shows up in how the decision making gets made every day. The type of people you hire, the type of people that you fire, um, are all kind of woven into how you think about this mission. And where we've seen issues, or where I've seen issues recently is twofold. One is when people don't like their jobs or when people are building businesses that would be considered somewhat soulless businesses, is usually like there's two issues. One is you haven't done a great job at clearly articulating the why of your business. So you haven't spent enough time really thinking about the mission, your vision, your values, your beliefs, and you haven't articulated those clearly. Or maybe they're not ambitious enough for the people that want to join your business. And that's a major issue because that's when you wake up those days and you say, I've got no purpose. Like, I don't feel like I'm connected to the business I'm working on. The second issue that I think we've seen show up recently is when you're actually very clear about those top parts, but you're not living them. And I think we've seen this more, most recently in the news with Uber, um, where they're starting to run into this issue around, you know, people joined under one pretense, really believing that there was strong purpose and there were values, and then what they're finding in their day-to-day -day is maybe those aren't being enacted or embodied in a way that the culture is taking shape, and that leaves people feeling like they're inauthentic, which is really difficult to be able to grow a business and get the best people. I wanna talk a little bit about what soul is not to me. Um, I used to think, so I, this is my third time um, building a business as an entrepreneur, and I had a, a little break at, at Facebook uh, for six years in between, but one of the things that I used to think was really soulful about the business when somebody would ask me, like, what's our mission, what's the culture? I used to give generic cultural statements back to people that I actually at the time really thought were core to our business. I used to say things like, nobody thinks we can do this, you know, the whole David versus Goliath um, mantra. I used to talk a lot about work hard, play hard as our culture. You might have heard some of these before. Um, we're going to change the world, but I didn't exactly stipulate any way that we were gonna do it in a meaningful way. Um, and I think that those things uh, are definitely not gonna build soul into your business. I think people see through that stuff and if that's the mission that you've got today, you should probably think about that. Um, where there's a noticeable gap between purpose and culture we talked about before. Um, I also think cool office as a culture is not really soulful. I think you can have a cool office, um, but I think if the cool office is the culture, um, you might be missing out on some depth. Just a thought. Um, so why soul matters? This is going to be things that you probably know, and I hope that a lot of these are obvious, but I think that they're really important. Um, it helps you recruit and retain the right people, which is obviously important. Probably more important than that, it helps you understand who the wrong people are and either don't hire them at the beginning or remove them quickly if you realize that they're not aligned with you. Um, keeps people focused and together. I think especially in the down periods, anybody who's been an entrepreneur or joined a business, like a startup or scale up, has probably seen some ups and downs. And it's not at the ups that you need to worry about this stuff, it's very much at the down periods where it doesn't look great and it's not as exciting to come in every day. And that's where you need to dig deep and you need to realize, am I here for a purpose? Is there something bigger than me that I want to weather the storm? Or is this time for me to leave? And I think if you're having doubts the first time you hit the down, it probably means that business doesn't have soul. Uh, I got a couple of key takeaways. Um, if you are an entrepreneur in a room, um, I think this is something you really need to think about investing in. I I've talked to a lot of, especially young entrepreneurs, where 
Um, I get the impression that some of this stuff seems fluffy and soft, and they want to be shipping stuff, and they want to be out pitching, and they want to be making sales. And all I would encourage you to think about is that this is the stuff that's going to grab it, like have people gravitate to your business and want to stay with you on this journey. And so don't sell it short. Don't sell the exercise out by just trying to get something on paper quickly and get it out the door that you think they want to hear. Really take the time to think about this stuff. And I would say especially your values and beliefs. It's really easy to put a couple of values on there. Like we care about um, you know, people that are bold and we want people to be open. But the question is like, do you really want people to be open? Because if somebody is open and then you shut them down in the business, then people are gonna see you as inauthentic. So you need to really think about what you're putting down and live those values. Um, if you're looking to join a company, there's a couple of things I wanted to get across. Obviously, have this conversation. I would push people on this and really try to understand their vision here because the closer aligned you are, I think the better you will be set up for success. And the second point I think is a really important one, and actually Justin Trudeau just talked about this uh, with Sheryl Sandberg the other day at uh, International Women's Day, is the difference between um, perspective and values. And I I'm just gonna double click on this for a second because I think it's a really important point. Different perspectives in a business is amazing, right? Diversity is our strength. We know that here in Canada. That's been like one of the things that I'm a big believer in. It's one of the reasons why I'm back. I think that it's encouraged here and I think that it makes businesses better. And this is all types of diversity, not just gender diversity or race or ethnic diversity, but diversity of background and perspective. I think the more diverse perspectives you have on a problem, the better you are to get it solved. However, that shouldn't be confused with values you do not want to compromise on values. And it's important to understand the difference between the two. So when you are talking to a prospective company, it's important to understand when you're asking the questions, you want to be aligned on your values and have different perspectives. And I think that leads to the best marriages as it relates to the type of company that you want to work with. Um, but when you get those mixed up, usually those are the messy divorces. So I started with Ray Charles, uh, and I'm going to end with them. They, there was once a question posed to him about what is soul, and his answer was, it's like electricity. We don't really know what it is, but it's a force that can light a room. And I hope that everybody here has an opportunity at least once in their career to work for a company where they feel this way. Thank you very much. Questions? Hi, my name is Amelia. I really enjoy your talk. And uh, of course, like in our personal life as well, our um, career, we're all looking for the soul or like the soul partner or soul mate. So you being um, having your own company, running your own business. So when you're trying to hire your employee, how you make sure your value and his or her value are aligned with each other and him or her is your sole employee. I, I like to think of it a couple different ways. Um, I like to spend a, personally a bunch of time with people and, and my style of interviewing might be a little different than other folks. I mean, I, I definitely love to understand how people have dealt with particular situations in the past and, and a lot of the standard interview questions. But I think it's helpful just to get people to talk about what's meaningful to them generally. Um, where, like, especially open-ended questions that let people kind of meander into areas that they're more passionate about or describe things in their personal life. Uh, I've always loved the question of understanding how, um, you know, when you ask somebody how their best friend would describe them, I'm always curious to hear those type of answers. Um, it just kind of gets people to change their perspective. I think you come into a boardroom and it's almost like you're ready to ace a test and you know all the answers and you're ready to spit them out as quickly as possible to the common questions you get. And I find like sometimes you need to dig in a little deeper in terms of just the person that you're hiring. And, and then I would say you always need to follow up with people that actually have experience with them. I think especially um, startups, sometimes you don't do the background checks or you don't talk to people that have worked with them in the past. And I would say sometimes that's a big miss. So um, those are kind of some of the things that I like to follow. But I think the best thing you can do is be proactive about what the business is all about. And what, what ends up happening is, is the people that you want tend to gravitate to you. Thank you. Hi, my name's Stefan. Um, curious, how as a leader do you create that soul or culture on a day-to-day -day type of basis? 
Uh, you, you live it. I think um, it shows up in the weirdest, smallest ways. I, I can give an example from Facebook because I feel like um, that was the first time that I really understood, I think, what it means to build a business with like true soul. Um, I had taken a shot at it, I think, in, in startups before, but I don't know if I really understood it until um, I spent some time with, um, with Mark. And one of the things that I noticed it was it was a particular moment um, that kind of resonates with me as I think back on my time there when we made a big investment in internet.org, which was by all means kind of a crazy investment for Facebook to make. Um, and I think a lot of people thought it was pretty contrived at the time because what internet.org was is just to be able to connect more people to the internet and there was a big investment that the company was making in being able to facilitate these billions of people that have no access to the internet today to get on the internet because there was some research done that shows for every 10 people you can get on the internet, you raise one out of poverty, which was really kind of noble and connected to the mission of making the world more open and connected, which was like a core thing for Facebook. And when Mark was asked on one of the earnings call about this investment, people were trying to find the angle. You know, there was a lot of, you know, well, you know, are you gonna monetize all these people? Like more people on Facebook means more money for you. And he was saying, listen, these are the poorest, like some of the poorest people in the world. Like, you know, it's not the number one person that like P&G wants to get to to sell deodorant or whatever they're doing. It's like this poor people in Africa who have never even been on the internet. Um, but it was one of these investments that he said was mission ROI positive, meaning that we probably weren't gonna recoup the money that we were gonna get from that investment, maybe in the next 20 or 30 years, but it was critical to us achieving our mission, which means that it was something that we needed to do. And, and I thought that was kind of an inspiring moment for me internally, where people can talk all they want about, you know, we wanna change the world, we wanna make it better. Um, what you do in the smaller, like, day-to-day -day moments and the investments you make and the actions you take, I think is how people see you as a leader in terms of are you walking the walk versus just going out there and giving people sound bites, which I think is a very common thing to do, which is we're here to change the world and we're gonna do great things, and then when they get pressed, you know, you wilt and it's about the profits and it's about how do we drive more efficiency in the business. And so I think like being able to be declarative and then having people see you make tough decisions that align with those missions is the best thing you can do as a leader. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much.